Howdy, y'all, and welcome to Atticus Live. Yeehaw! <laughs> All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, we are coming to you live from Utila, the Bay Islands, Honduras. And uh, there is a cold front going on currently, so the boat might be rocking around a bit, <laughs> might get a little loud, might get rained on. No promises. I'm not sure how this is going to go, but <laughs> I'm Jordan. This is the better looking one. Hey, Desiree. Her name is Desiree, <laughs> and we're happy to have you all. So let's up. Let's say hello to everyone. Hello, Hugh Van Dyne. Nice meeting you a couple weeks ago in Sarasota. We've got Alan Davis from Colorado. Uh, Brad Scott, how's it going? Um, Dave, as always, our moderator is here kicking butt. What's I love up, you, Dave? Dave. <laughs> Uh, C.T. Huff, ahoy, me hearties from Denver, Colorado. Cheers, Taylor Huff. Oh, hey, cool. cheers, Taylor. Two people from Colorado. Awesome. We've got Aaron, e, Aaron A. I'm new to your channel and very interested in sailing with my family one day. Thank you for all the information. You guys do a really good job with all the aspects, whatever the topic is. That's really sweet. Thanks. Cool. So we got Sailing SV Sunday, C.T. Huff, Ian Goldberg, Jeremy at SV Brujo. We got Thomas Golan in the house. Oh, What's hey, up? Hey, Cushy Pushy. SV of Spirit Libre, Matthew Smith. Rob S. Yeah, Matt, Rob S. Hey, I, just, I saw that you just got the uh, preventer set up. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Alan Davis is in ah, for the first super yay. chat of the evening. Cheers. All right. Cheers, Alan. We really appreciate it. Okay. Ha. That's oh, hard. yeah. And tonight we will be doing a drawing. So anyone who donates $5 or more on PayPal or super chat will be entered into our drawing and at the end of the live stream we'll give whoever we pick out of this hat a free project atticus t-shirt because we're really excited to announce the release of our swag that's right so the again the uh the ra raffle is going to be for a project atticus t-shirt so you're gonna get a free t-shirt and that's if you do a donation of five dollars or more on either super chat or on PayPal. And, and your name gets to go in this super cool hat. So, oh, cool. okay, Let's John Hood. What's hey, up, John, John? Cheers to you. Okay, so Desiree's got some writing to do. Mm -hmm. I'm already busy. Okay. He says, put me in for the t shirts, please. Thanks, bud. All right, we got you, John. <laughs> John. And then, uh, let's see, we got Senator Perry also. Cup of coffee in me. Make it full, folks. Uh, All right. <laughs> nice. Cool, man. Cheers. Yeah, we're definitely enjoying the hot beverage on this chilly uh honduran well, evening i know you guys are gonna laugh at me but it it feels cold to us <laughs> so don't don't hate me for saying that uh let me know when you're ready for the hat bud hey hugh van dunn is in on the raffle as well right. cheers Thank in the you. fiber oh, sb man. sunday patrick coat oh, in gosh. the house i'm gonna be so busy the whole time <laughs> uh, yeah get writing <laughs> oh boy and ralph <laughs> Thanks, lang ralph. okay cool here i need to put this in the okay room. here we are so guys, while Desiree's busy writing all these wonderful super chats down, uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about where we are. Um, so again, we're in Utila in the Bay Islands of Honduras. Um, Honduras is kind of a, you know, kind of a, a little bit of a sketchy country to travel in. Um, but in the Bay Islands out here, it couldn't be safer, it seems. We really have enjoyed our time here so far. Utila is the smallest of the three major islands of the Bay Islands. And uh, it's basically all about diving here. Oh, we got SV of Spirit Libre and Tom McFarlane. Oh, hey guys. Coming oh. in for the super chat Thank and you. for the raffle. Wow, this is awesome. Yeah. SV Spirit Libre. Someone's go going home <laughs> with a t shirt. All right. So, uh, anyway, we're really enjoying our time here in Utila so far. It's real small and quaint, um, but touristy. Uh, definitely a lot of people prospering on the island. And. Uh, Desiree was going to tell you about our free diving experiences, but I think you got a little bit of writing to yeah, do. Yeah, in the fiber. Uh, and we got Ricky W. and Chicken Patty Fries coming in with some more Super hey Chat. Hey, guys. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Cheers. And so I should tell you, cheers, guys. I should tell you that this hat I actually bought in Guatemala. So this is like the traditional, like, I'm a cowboy I'm super cool hat and so I don't really wear it all that often because I don't find myself in a situation where I don't feel like kind of a poser but uh, hopefully here in the future I'll start wearing it more often I feel like that characterizes my whole like interaction with fashion I'm like oh yeah I want to wear that to be trendy and then I buy it and I'm just like I'm never wearing that yeah totally <laughs> Anthony Morris cheers amigo 
Thank you very much Cheers. for the Super Thank Chat. Thank you, Anthony Morris. So something that we've been doing while we've been in Nutilla for the last, oh gosh, like two weeks now, is we finally have become free divers. Uh, we are free diver certified. Certified. That's what Ooh. I'm looking for. And guess how deep we both dived. Oh my gosh. Okay, so guys, guess how deep we free dove the other day. Yeah. How yeah. about whoever guesses your depth gets to be entered in the drawing? Okay, whoever can depth, whoever can guess how deep I dove. First, because he dove more than I did. Just a little bit yeah. though. Not by much. I saw the end and I was I was ready to go for it, but I just thought, oh, I'll get it next time. Yeah. All right, and Chad? Oh, man. Thank, thank you, you Chad. amigo. Cheers. <laughs> All right. So, um Oh, and Brad Scott. Oh, cheers. Thank you, Brad. Cheers, amigo. Cheers. All right. Oh, my gosh. So, anyway, okay, <laughs> Sailing SV Someday says 120 feet. Should I give him hints? Yeah. It's less than SV Someday. Hugh Van Dunn is saying 60. It's more than that. Here we go. Geronimo McDuggins, 100 feet. All right. Geronimo. Okay, Geronimo. you are officially in on this. Matthew Smith and Bobby Andell. Thanks, Good. guys. Cheers. And Corey Brown. Hey, Corey. Good to see you, buddy. Um, okay, so Geronimo <laughs> wins it. So I actually dove down to, to 100 feet on one breath. It was crazy. And uh, it was definitely a lot like less painful than I thought it was going to be. I, I thought people that dove to those sorts of, that free dove to those kind of depths were just like suffering and really wanted to breathe. But basically there's the, the school here that we're taking the course at, they're just giving us like a lot of, uh, basically breathing techniques and techniques to lower your heart rate and just chill and so diving for that long and that deep becomes so much easier brad scott asked if we're weighted basically that you're weighted so that at 10 meters or i'm sorry at 12 meters so you know what is that 39 feet at about 39 feet you're neutrally buoyant so that way, on your way up, for the majority of that, you're you're gonna float on your own. Um, and then once you're past that, going down, you don't have to work so hard to get down. Nick Garcia is in the is in the running. All right, thank you, amigo. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nick. So I'm almost anyway, caught up. <laughs> yeah. So thanks, guys, for uh, uh, all the kind words. People are saying that they're super stoked about the hundred feet. So if you guys are at all interested in spear fishing or getting serious about free diving um that uh i highly we both highly recommend taking an actual course yeah um it, it's just crazy how many things we were doing wrong yeah and um, super unsafe and you know a lot of safety factors that we weren't taking into account um and on top of that there's just a lot of different techniques that allowed us to get way better, like improve tremendously, basically over the course of two and a half day class. So if you guys are interested in doing that sort of thing, definitely consider it. And we will put a plug in for the business that we're going through. It's uh, Free Dive Utila, and it's a great company. And the whole business does nothing but free diving. And so they're just like super into free diving and that's their whole spiel. So definitely check it out if you're looking at a uh, free diving vacation. Woo, I'm um, all caught up, man. <laughs> okay, and you Thanks, got guys. you got Geronimo in there? Yep. Okay, you're yeah. in Geronimo. Awesome. <laughs> cool. So, whoa boy. Okay. Yeah. yeah as Jordan Things are happening. <laughs> as Jordan mentioned at the beginning of this live stream, we are in the middle of a cold front, but we really just trust our mantis anchor so much um, and it's the weather report said it wasn't going to gust above 35 and we know the wind direction there's there are no boats directly ahead of us um, so we're pretty much good to go but still that being said whenever you hear that gust come up and you feel the boat kind of shift you're like heel like, over okay. You're like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay sailing vessel uncensored awesome thank you going in the hat and then sailing sv someday says that they have the trainer app but definitely plan to take a course as well and i actually uh downloaded that app but i haven't used it yet and so that that sort of static apnea training oh. i hear is really helpful so you'll have to tell us what you think of it but uh anyway so guys opening the floor up to you ask away we'd love to see know what questions you have <laughs> and what you'd like us to talk more about <clears throat> 
Um, Ralph Lang says, I just bought a 45 pound Mantis. Glad to hear nice. it. Dude, Ralph, you're going to love that yep. anchor. It, it's it's really uh, treated us well, that's for certain. Yep, and then if you guys have any questions in the meantime, feel free to go ahead and ask them. I wanted to bring up a question from one of our Facebook followers, Brett Smith. He wanted to know um, how we handle uh, the mizzen staysail with the wind generator, which is mounted on our mizzen mast. So take it away, yeah. <laughs> sailing guy. So basically, uh, we we really have to, for the most part, we turn the wind generator off when we're sailing, um, because a with the mizzen stay sail that'll totally get wrapped up in the blades, but. Once we have, and when we're setting up the mizzen stay sail in particular, like when the sail isn't full, it's just blanketing the, the uh, wind generator. Um, so you got to be pretty careful about that. We got to turn that brake on. John Predmore, oh, cheers, you. amigo. Gracias. Cheers. Um, so, but once we're actually sailing, once we've got that mizzen stay sail full, then it pushes forward of the wind generator and doesn't interfere with it at all. Um, but again, when we're sailing, we generally have the wind generator off. Even without the mizzen stay sail, the halyards that run up and down the mizzen, um, or like especially the topping lift for the main, for instance, can get a, get a little loose and can hit the blades. Oh. So for the most part, we just turn that bad boy off when we're sailing. Thanks, RJ Salty Adventures. Ooh, what a good name. Yeah, so RJ is asking, will you teach me how to sail when I get on my boat? <laughs> the answer is yes, RJ. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> boy, if I, I wonder where are you located, RJ, but uh, because who knows if we'll be running into you in the near future, but something that we are excited to start doing is concept videos. And so we want to really start making more videos specifically about sailing, about techniques, and then about the skills and techniques of cruising more generally. So we hope those videos will be coming soon and will be helpful to you, RJ. Cool. And thank you, Robert Miller and Hugh Van Dyne. He says, Cheers. So I'll ask again. So Jordan, what's your take on the articles I sent Desiree about catch rigs? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that that's a great point, Hugh. Um, and I did have a chance to read it the other day. Um, specifically, and I'm trying to think, gosh, now my head's all jumbled and I'm trying to think exactly what the article talked about. Um, I believe it was saying specifically that they're not the best on the wind, but off the wind they're tremendously advantageous. Um, Hugh, remind me exactly, like specifically the bullet points that you'd like me to talk about about it, because I, I must have read it like a couple days ago you told me about it. so. Yeah, remind me specifically, and I'll and I'll talk about it. And also, Robert Miller, thanks for all the information about um, spearfishing in Belize. We learned a lot. Mm. And a big uh oh with the permit. Won't do that again. Yeah, but and and Hugh, until until you are able to tell me like kind of the bullet points that you're getting at, and I'd be happy to answer that because I I am getting more and more into the catch rig. Um, specifically, I do really enjoy the uh, uh, the mizzen stay sail. It just takes a long time to put up. Um, and so in a lot of ways, if it's hard to rig something and it's inconvenient to rig something, you do it a whole lot less, right? And so that's one of the downsides. But when we do our Pacific crossing, that sail is going to be awesome because we're going to set that thing and be able to cruise for days on end. Okay. Um, oh man, I just had, I just, I'll uh, say Richard Cunningham says, how many pounds is your Mantis anchor? anchor? And we have a 45 pound galvanized uh, steel anchor. Mm -hmm. uh, and we love it. Uh, and then somebody else was asking about lighting uh, and Jordan installed these, um, uh, you should talk about the lighting. <laughs> oh well, they're just they're just normal LED uh, uh, like uh, weatherproof strip lighting, um, and they're super bright. And in fact, we can show you. Um, this is our underway red lighting, so that we can uh, you know not ruin our night vision. And then we've got this insanely bright light, which is really cool. And then Corey Route, thanks for your super chat. Cheers. He says, "I was late. What are you guys doing with the hat?" And we're actually entering anyone who gives $5 or more on Super Chat or PayPal um, a chance to win a free Project Atticus t-shirt. 
So there we'll do a drawing and at the end of the live stream. Stephen, Stephen Sherrod is in on oh, that thank game you. as well. New thank Zealand. you, Stephen. And so Hugh just got back to, to us, and I really want to answer this question. He says about reefing the main before the mizzen. Um, so specifically, we, and, and that's a great point, Hugh, I think that some boats that are uh, catches, so some catches don't have as much weather helm as Atticus does. I haven't sailed a whole lot of catches, so I'm not sure, but a lot of people that sail catches are big fans of sailing uh, jig and jigger, which means sailing with the uh, head sail and your mizzen. Ideally, if you've got a uh, roller furling head sail, then that means that you can control all of your sails, reef them, douse them from the cockpit, right? You can manage the mizzen from the cockpit and then you can furl the head sail from the cockpit. You don't need to leave. So that's a great thing to do in heavy weather because you can remain in the cockpit and be safe. The problem that we have is that Atticus has quite a bit of weather helm. And real quick, thank you, Barry D. Thank you, Barry D. Appreciate Your name's it. going in. Going in the hat. So the thing with Atticus is we have substantial weather helm on the boat. now. I'm going to try and fix that a little bit because I think we our, our spars are raked aft a little bit too much because I didn't know what I was doing when I tuned the rig. And so I'm going to try to fix that here in the you know coming months when I get a chance. But the fact is because we have a significant amount of weather helm, I generally start reefing aft and work my way forward. Boy, that boat came really close. Super close. Um, oh, and also thank you, Sharon Clevenger. Got your donation on PayPal, which is awesome because they take a really teeny cut compared to the super chat cuts. Cool. So anyway, uh, we start reefing aft and work our way forward just to help with the weather helm issue. Um, and so that's why in a lot of our episodes you won't see the mizzen up because really once we get 16 knots of wind or more. Uh, there's just too much weather helm and so we'll just go with the full main and maybe even the Genoa to really keep the boat well balanced. Um, that's one issue that I'm hoping when I retune the rig and, and fix the rake, I'm hoping that instead of running with the large Genoa so often we can switch to the jib, the 100% working jib a little bit sooner. So I uh, hope that answers that question Hugh and if you have any other points about uh, the catch rig, I'd be really happy to answer it. And but we've got a lot more questions. Basically, my, my philosophy on catches now is that if you're willing to sacrifice the point ability, so if you're willing to sacrifice your windward performance, a catch is so nice off the wind because it gives you a lot of options and it gives you a lot of horsepower uh, to move a relatively heavy boat like Atticus. So Awesome. Thank you, Rick Deckard. And Lori Graham, you guys are awesome. Rick, Cheers, any gang. relation to Dan? <laughs> and also, um, Liz Miller was asking about our water maker plans. And we actually had a really good question also from a YouTuber. Um, he said, what would it take your, to make your own water? Is it the equipment cost, power, or space issue that's keeping you from doing it so far? So, water maker talk. Water maker. Well, the thing that's keeping us from doing it is time. <laughs> Literally, we have, uh, I'm, I'm, I got Desiree's Thanks, <laughs> Christmas sweater trying to keep all these names in here. It'd be pretty funny. We get a gust and just boom, all the names are gone. I'm actually out hey, of Hey, Cowboy Scallywag. You're out of papers. Yeah, I wasn't planning well, for this. Well, you can run and get more. Yeah, I'll go get more. <laughs> so I can, I can, uh, oh, and, and Cowboy Scallywag what? says, that's a great name. Yeah. Cowboy Scallywag. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, and Jeffrey Robbins. Cheers. So real Cheers. quick. Jeffrey Robbins says, uh, uh, hello from aboard SV Zeitgeist, cool name, now anchored in Bristol Bay on Union Island in the Grenadines. Nice. Could, sounds like a great place to be. My wife, Alicia, loves you guys and wants to buy you kids a drink. Aww. Well, thank you, Alicia and Jeffrey. We <laughs> really you. appreciate it, guys. Cheers. <laughs> um, and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the Grenadines. I've heard it's a beautiful cruising ground. Mm -hmm. And then Cowboy Skywax says, nice hat, Jordan. Hope to see you on AIS in the VI next time you're near St. Croix. Right. Rock on, Cowboy Scallywag, although we don't have AIS at the moment, so we're hoping to install at some point in the near future, but can't promise we'll be on there anytime soon. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth Miller, hey Elizabeth, says Rob wants to know about your future water maker and I want to know about your trip on Libra, so perfect uh, transition. So basically the water maker, we've got all the parts on Atticus to build our own water maker at the moment. 
Um, I designed it from scratch. I actually did that in uh, Isla Mujeres when I was working with Captain John, who you guys may have met from one of our pre previous episodes. And he was encouraging me to build our own and design our own water maker. And at the time we had gotten a job diagnosing some problems on a cruiser's water maker. So I, at the time I just was completely immersed in how water makers work and we were able to design one. And I actually bought all the parts for it and they're in this big duffel bag way back there <laughs> in this deep dark crevice of the boat that I don't ever like going into. And, uh, and so all I need now is the time to put it all together. Specifically, um, what I want to do is attach our spare alternator onto the uh, flywheel with a new belt, a second belt, so that we can generate more electricity and then we need to get an electronic motor to run the high pressure pump, which we already have, we just don't have the motor. And so mounting that second uh, uh, belt with a tensioner and all that all those shenanigans is gonna take me some time because I've never done anything like that before. So basically, we just need a couple weeks, um, which is not gonna happen because we've got, <laughs> unfortunately, that project has gotten knocked down our list of things that need to be done on Atticus. Crazy. Um, we just never seem to have enough time. So yeah. hopefully this summer when we get to Panama, uh, we'll be able to get to that. Yeah, and then um, as far as my trip with uh, SV Sail Libra, it was awesome. Um, it was really cool um, to kind of be doing something that everyone else who was on the on the sail kind of dreamed of doing. And so it was really empowering because it made me recognize how much I had learned through osmosis that I never really had given myself credit for. So I pretty much... Uh, was like at the crew level which was really fun um, and uh, yeah it was it was awesome just feeling the motion of another boat and something else that I discovered that was really empowering um, is a lot of times people tell us oh you need a bigger boat how can you handle such rough seas you're getting seasick because you have such a small boat um, but we were we got caught in the middle of a cold front a pretty big one uh, in the Gulf Stream. Well, I guess by the time it hit, we were out of the Gulf Stream. Yeah, you were just, you, they were, they were just about the same latitude as Tampa Bay. Yeah, but it was pretty intense and we were motoring straight into it. Um, so everyone was seasick, I was seasick, and I kind of told Jordan, I feel like at some point, the level of suckiness, like, doesn't really matter, you know? Like, I was, uh, pretty i was extremely seasick versus maybe on atticus i would have been extremely freaking seasick you know <laughs> so it was nice to kind of feel comfortable uh with our choice in boats and how small it was i also learned how comfortable and kind of like intimate atticus is and i learned that um i inherently understand all of the smells and motion and sounds on atticus so that when we are underway, I can kind of visualize what's happening, whether it's a problem or something's happening correctly. Um, so I didn't realize that, that that was something that I had really internalized versus being on Sail Libra on this huge sailboat with another captain that I had to uh, trust uh, was kind of difficult because you'd hear these loud noises and kind of be like, okay, like <laughs> they don't look worried, so I guess I shouldn't be worried. <laughs> uh, and Captain Ryan was amazing, uh, and Captain Randy was was also incredible. So it was a it was a great experience, and I'd highly recommend it for anyone who's trying to figure out um, if cruising is really a, kind of like a realistic goal for you. Because uh, Jordan and I always say cruising is eighty percent kind of shitty and difficult and 20% awesome dolphin sunsets just like pure peace and bliss um, and so passages uh, can be really really scary and uncomfortable uh, and physically demanding so um, it's a really cool way to actually get a passage under your belt without having to own the boat <laughs> uh, outfit the boat and captain the boat <laughs> and I would also say that passages can be really rough but they do get slowly they get easier as you do more of them. That's true. Like yeah. it, the first one is just like 
your heart's gonna stop from anxiety. It's just mm -hmm. so freaky, you know? <laughs> if you're At like least us. for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just worry so much. Yeah, and so getting to experience it without the responsibility is is awesome, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, I think for Desiree, you know, she she came back even more uh, uh, sort sort of confident than than she was when she left. So. Uh, uh oh, we got rain coming. Oh, I need great. to catch up on on the drying. Also. Yeah. So so basic uh, couple of things. Uh, Rod Brandon says you two are awesome, relevant relevant for our future cruising plans. Well, thank you, Rod. Very much appreciated. Steve and Jared, thank you very much. Um, Brad Scott said, I don't think anyone else with a YouTube sailing channel does live Q&As. This makes these two buds more real and approachable. Well, Brad, I think you're <laughs> awesome. You. We really appreciate <laughs> all of your comments and, and for always being super positive with us. So thank you. Um, and then somebody, and I apologize, a couple people asked if we're going to be uh, decorating the boat for Christmas, Steve uh, Journeau, and uh, I think we're going to try, but uh, we're probably going to wait until we get to the dock. We're going to be going to a dock here in the next couple weeks in Roatan so that we can spend Christmas Ro with... What? Ro what? Roatan. Excuse me. As a... The Latina is giving right. me a hard time so, about it. So, if you guys don't know this, all the Central American countries have like a nickname for the locals that they call themselves. So in Guatemala, they're called Chapin. Uh, in uh, Costa Rica, they're called Tica or Tico. And in Honduras, we're called Catrachas or Catrachos for men. And so as a Catracha, I cannot allow Jordan to say Roatan. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, if you want to pronounce it in a gringo accent, you can say Roatan. <laughs> yeah. And so for those of you that don't know, Desiree's mother was born in Honduras. She's originally from here, her family is from here, and she was the first generation in her family to move to the States when she was a kid. And so we're going to be going to her uh, mother's hometown for Christmas to see the family. Yes. And so during that time, we'll probably try and decorate the boat. Uh, okay, so I'm running a little behind here. Okay, I'm going to say the names of people as I put them in the hat. Thanks, Rod Brandon. Go on. I'll just do it as you talk. Oh, okay. And then we got chicken pat. Oh, should I not say it? I can do the, the hats. Yeah. Okay. Well, Bill Garnley says here's a little funny money for uh, to have a drink on us. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And Steven. Uh, Steven Jared. Janice Cumberledge says Merry Christmas from SV Uncensored. And then Steve Jerno. So thank you all. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, all right. So let's see here. Let's uh, chicken patty fries. Let's, uh, oh my gosh, I'm so behind. Sorry, yeah. guys. Uh, Camping123 says, what up, homies? What up, dude? Um, and uh, Jordan, your hair doesn't look as sexy flowing in the breeze as Desiree's. <laughs> Ellis, I know. It's a problem I have all the time. I'm constantly being overshadowed by her. It's just not <laughs> fair. Uh, <laughs> Rick says, nice to see Jordan in a different shirt. Thank you. Yeah, I... I wish I could wear the hat, but unfortunately, it's being used as the Bill as Connelly. the vessel for the for the names. Um, but anyway, yeah, between but yeah, okay. So let's see here. Uh, oh, we got Coco Pelli in the house. What's oh, up, Coco hey, Pelli? Hey guys. Are and, you guys in Antigua right now? No, they're in Ro Rotan. Nice. Rotan. I feel like they're in they're in Guatemala again. Oh, Jan they are Janice, in Mar. You're Janice right. Cumberledge. Okay, so, uh, all right, guys. So, uh, what uh, topics would you guys like us to move on to? I know that we totally... Here's some questions that Dave asked for us. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Yeah, we're super behind. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so... Have you had anyone come up to you when you are making a crossing? I watched Gone with the Winds, and they had someone in a small outboard approach them 100 miles off the coast. That's a great question. Yeah, and that was from Mike Codwell. So thank you, Mike. Um, we Rusty ha nail. <laughs> we have that happen all the time, basically. Um, like when we're on passages? Well, it depends on what you mean by passage, right? Like, we've been underway, and, like, a boat will be, like, cruising up to us, and we're very aware that, you know, that can happen. So we're always like, oh, boy, like, is this the time? Is this the one, you know? Right. And every single time, they've just been coming over to wave and say hi, um, and that's basically it. We've never had Rich any... Bolton? We've never have had any incidents 
Um, but we have had multiple occasions. But can you scoot this way or back a little bit? Because you're sneaking towards it. There you are. Hi. Um, anyway, so we've never had anything bad come of it. It's always been friendly. And so that's actually one of the uh, main issues regarding our security strategy is the fact that you really can't assume that someone approaching your boat has malintentions or bad intentions. Um, it's, start, it's starting to rain here, so cross your fingers that we don't get rained out. That being said, um, our last passage from uh, Guatemala to Honduras, um, in order to avoid a, uh, an area that was, has been reported uh, to have high levels of piracy in the last like 10 years or so, um, in order to avoid that area, we actually sailed kind of like a U shape to get away, to get away, to go east and then to kind of get away from the coast as much as we could. And we even, um, I really like doing oh that. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> it's, we're going to squish in here. You got your, um, rain jacket. Okay. And let me throw the this is the real there. deal. <laughs> here, can we like both just squish <laughs> right here? Okay. Oh boy. It's, it, oh. yeah. So, all right, almost good. Okay. Okay, so nice and cozy. In. Nice and cozy in the cold front. <laughs> so uh Okay. <laughs> this is good. This is this is gonna work. Can you move that to the left a little bit? So what's can, what's that? Your laptop so I can hit my neck. Okay. Then you're you gotta scoot over a little. Alright, so uh Oh, so, so Ralph is saying it's loud. Sorry guys, I can talk louder than the rain, trust me. <laughs> Tur just turn that volume down, you'll hear me. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> Sailing SV Sunday says, protect the hat! <laughs> and uh, Brad Scott says, this is why you built the Dodger, exactly. <laughs> yeah, isn't that awesome? It's literally pouring down rain right now. <laughs> and we're just nice and cozy in this very small little area. Okay, so I wanted to continue talking about the piracy and the, off the Honduran coast. Yeah, yeah, in fact, would you mind if I just described the actual route? Sure. Like where it was, and then, so just to give you an idea, it's the, the area that we went through that piracy has been a problem in the past is the Honduran coastline going from Guatemala to the Bay Islands. They haven't had any issues in the last year um, or maybe even in a couple years, but there was a time period there where it was a problem. And so we ended up just kind of doing a tack way offshore, ma making sure that we were about 20 miles off the coast at all times, and then tacked back in towards the Bay Islands. Yep, yeah, so um, because of that, we were offshore by, by, a, by a, a margin that most boats that I saw in the distance uh, like didn't even come close to. So. I felt really safe because any boat that I saw, I could tell was paralleling us, either going t towards the same direction we were going or away from us. And they were like way, way, way close to the shore. So if there was ever a boat that I thought might be kind of making its way towards us based on their navigation lights, we actually went, uh, ran black. So we turned the lights off. Um, and we do that every couple of uh, hours on night watch. Um, and so I really like that and uh, I'm not gonna lie I was really nervous about it so uh, and I think that's what happened with Gone with the Winds they were actually underway and a boat approached them and that yeah. hasn't happened to us yet while we're underway well approach us in the sense that like tried to literally come alongside right um, and so that's the tough part about having a strategy is it happens so often that a boat comes just to kind of say hello, that it's it's not until kind of at the last moment that you can really decide like, okay, these are bad guys and they're trying to board the boat. Um, Tom McMichael asked, do you have a gun on board? No, we don't. Um, to be honest, if, it, if there weren't legal issues with that, then I might have one on board, but it's most countries where a gun would come in handy make you uh, check it in when you get to the country. And then you have to leave that country from that same port because they won't forward the gun to another port for you. Mm -hmm. which, which basically means we couldn't do it because we almost never leave a country from the same port that we entered in from. Um, that said, on a passage, it could come in handy. But again, any of these pirates that mean business, I just, I, I have a serious 
doubt that I would win a gun battle with them. What I've read, and you can read a lot of accounts on the CSSN, the Caribbean Safety and Security Net, um, what I've read, especially off the Mosquito Coast, uh, Esther L, cheers, cheers from Esther. SV Hope. Esther, Esther, right? Or Esther. But anyway, so off the Mosquito Coast, uh, there's a lot of piracy going on these days, and what I've read from the boats that successfully got away is if there was any kind of wind or seas going on at all, is that the, the sailboat would go hard on the wind and then just like keep cruising hard on the wind. And often... You can't see it. There you are. <laughs> Esther. And often what would happen... Hey, and Scott Tillotson. Thank you, Scott. Oh, thank you. Uh, but often what would happen is the sailboat would be hard on the wind and the fishing vessel is generally a less seaworthy boat than a cruising sailboat because these are often not large trawlers. They're a lot of times they're open boats with like an outboard. And so they just can't really pound into the seas uh, for a prolonged period of time and, and while pounding into the seas safely come alongside and board your boat with, without you being able to thwart their boarding. So from what I understand, from what I've read, that's your safest option uh, if you do get into that sort of a situation, is just go hard on the wind and stay hard on the wind and be somewhat prepared to kind of thwart them coming aboard. Um, and if you read on the CSSN, about 50% of the occurrences uh, are successfully uh, deterred with a method similar to that. And then Ralph Lang says, see what Patrick Chiles, or Chiles maybe, says about deterring pirates. That'd be interesting. Uh, can you include a link? And then um, somebody was asking how our internet is so good, and essentially we learned that um, something that is not really mentioned in a lot of cruising guides, uh, because the technology has changed so much in the last like two to five years, um, is that you can get really excellent data packages um, as you're cruising, at least in Central America. So we bought a huge package of uh, data, and what's pretty cool about it also is uh, in Guatemala and Honduras, the company that does it, they, they offer all these kinds of like crazy promotions. So today we actually got uh, double the internet for the same price, which is awesome. Oh boy, got some more. Uh, Jack Films, thank you. Cheers to you. Cheers, Jack. Cheers, Hugh, Hugh Van Dunn says, come Hugh, on, bud. Hugh, third time. <laughs> Hugh! And then uh, Sailing Ancora Uno. Hey, guys, love your channel. Just bought a 34-foot sailboat in Tennessee. Oh. I hope to see you all in the Caribbean. Congratulations, Sailing Ancora Uno. Yeah. That's so exciting. That's awesome. How big is it? 30 foot. 34-footer. Nice. Yeah, let us know what kind of boat it is. Yeah. Be really curious. And what kind of projects are you, do you have? Uh, working on it, or is it a uh, ready to sail one? Yeah, um, and then Michelle Hillier. Cheers, Michelle. Thank you uh, very cheers. much. Cheers, thank you. And Hugh, how's your uh, refit coming along? Let's see. Sal sailing Ancora Uno. Did you read that comment? Uh, uh, no. Hey, I love your. Oh, yeah, I, I read that. Oh, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, bring on the questions, gang. We we're really curious to. Yeah. To, uh, to see what you guys got. I know we're a little behind here. Uh, David Albright asks, says, tell us about your angle. We just bought a 60 quart when, when our isotherm holding plate died. Long story short, we love the angle. It's super efficient, which is great. And it also is easy to install uh, or to retrofit into a boat that never had a fridge. And Atticus, to be perfectly honest, didn't even have a very big uh, uh, cold storage area in general so the angle is great to be able to mount that uh, on the set T easily and quickly Thank you, um, the uh, the problem we've had with it is that the the body the outer shell of the angle is just uh, sheet metal just cold steel and so it started rusting really badly and whatever kind of paint product they used to coat it just failed uh, really badly and so it was just super super rusty and I just recently uh, cleaned it up prepped it and painted it and it's already starting to rust again so it's just this that's been kind of a pain um, but to be honest I would buy it again because yeah, it's maybe just preemptively paint it coat it with something yeah right but, from the get-go before you get corrosion yeah. you know going on yeah and it's also like um, what do you call it mentally 
you know, Atticus is small and we didn't spend too much time refitting the interior just because I put my foot down and I was like, we need to start cruising. And so just mentally seeing all that corrosion and like in the middle of our cabin kind of put me in a bad mood. So uh, if you can kind of uh, get, get a head start on the corrosion, it'll be worth it for your state of mind. Yeah, totally. As well as functional. Yeah. Cool. Well, here's a good question. SV Phoenix and me says, do you have a recent sailing channel that has inspired you or has drawn your interest in any particular way? Sailing and, and what were one or more of those which inspired you to start, if any? Um, so you can talk about Sailing Kitty Wake. Um, I just think uh, Sailing Kitty Wake has an amazing channel. They just seem like really interesting people. And to me, I love their uh, how thorough they are with their concept videos. So they're another sailing channel that's actually working as they sail. Um, so that was that was nice to kind of um, have in common with someone else. Um, and yeah, I just think Elena is awesome. Kind of have a big girl crush on her. <laughs> yeah, totally. And we got Richard Smith and Kenneth Kenneth Stapleton. Cheers. Thank you guys. Gracias amigos. All right. Um, and I would say that one. I didn't get too into sailing channels until we had started because when we made our first video, it was just before Sailing Uma made their first, um, just before La Vagabond made their first. So the only ones that were really around, um, it was just the early days of sailing channels and I didn't watch a whole lot of them. Uh, someone that really inspired me a lot was Captain Fatty Goodlander. He was super inspirational before we bought Atticus or anything. Um, Cruising World Magazine in general got me super stoked uh, on a regular basis. And then uh, I think the only author that I had read at that point was Hal Roth. I'm a big Hal Roth fan. So if you and, guys are into reading... And Lynn and Larry Party. I didn't start reading Lynn and Larry Party until we had bought Got Atticus. Boat, yeah. But yeah. she did get us through the refit mentally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, definitely check those resources out. Um, I, I'd say for... Uh, current sailing channels that uh, I'm particularly impressed with. I mean, I think I'm biased. We got to work with Uma, and I don't think that there is another sailing channel out there that uh, that you know can compete with them on just like their creativity uh, and their hard work. Yeah. And we're all about hard work. You know, what I mean, that's kind of our whole motto, and and they're right there with us on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I I just recently started watching and checking out there's one channel called the sailing frenchman um and i kind of dig his style you know what i mean he's actually all about sailing so and also kind of inspirational. dave our moderator has his own uh yes. youtube channel so check check it out next time he comments just click on his name dv zire he's doing a refit out in ireland um just pretty awesome project um thank you parrotfish your name's going in the hat as well as Kenneth uh, Stapleton. Have a Christmas drink on Ken and Charlene. Uh, don't forget Beth and Bruce. Did I, was that a, did I forget Beth and Bruce? Uh, okay, so yeah, we got a couple people just like love the parties, love Uma. Um, and then Sail Oriah Reef, it says, hello all, just buy a boat and rebuild it. Yes, <laughs> we agree. <laughs> Oh, and then uh, not not normal says free range sailing is pretty cool. Mm. I agree. I dig their I would say like philosophy on cruising. You know what I mean? Like the whole uh, self reliance thing. I think is awesome. Uh, Ken Kaz says, "Hey there, love your stuff. A real working channel. Love the candor as you go. How do you handle medical issues and checkups?" Um, and before we set off to sail, uh, Jordan convinced me that we wouldn't need health insurance because he said it would be more. Don't worry about it. It would be more expensive to buy a plan that would be compatible in other countries and more of a hassle to try to find doctors uh, who fit in that uh, plan uh, than just going to that country, finding uh, the best medical facilities, and then paying out of pocket. And I was very skeptical, but um, so far. Uh, we've passed through Cancun, which is a huge hub for medical tourism. So we got really excellent health uh, services there. Guatemala as well, out of Guatemala City. A couple friends of ours got uh, spinal surgery um, for under $5,000 and, and they're recovering very beautifully. Same thing with uh, dental work. Um, and then the next kind of hub uh, is, will be probably Cuba and Colombia as far as um, healthcare 
uh, good, good and affordable health care. Um, and it's kind of like a double-edged sword. The reason why it's so cheap, cheap for us is because uh, it's usually a country that has uh, a very small middle class or there's a very large wealth disparity. So a lot of times when the health care is really uh, inexpensive for us in a country like in Mexico or Guatemala City, um, it wasn't that the locals had access to that amazing affordable health care. It was just that... Um, the wealthy people have access to it. Exactly. And, and, and their 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 bar of what is wealthy is just lower than ours is. You know, right. sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Uh, Ellis Temple, thank you very much. Hey guys, here's a little something for you from Ellis and Lisa from... Oh, SV Movie Trap, cool. <laughs> we talked on the phone while I was in uh, Isla Mujeres. Thank Rock you. On. And uh, so real quick, Jim S. says, how do you get entered in the drawing? So real quick, for any of you guys that are just joining in on the conversation, we've got this awesome Guatemalan cowboy hat. And anybody that uh, donates $5 or more through Super Chat or through PayPal gets entered in the raffle for a free Atticus t-shirt. And we'll be doing the drawing in about five minutes. Yeah, it's coming up, guys. <laughs> so, real quick, SV Sunday says Beth Leonard and Bruce Van Sant uh, for authors. Okay. Totally agree. Now, if you if you want to talk about uh, like reference books, so not so much like nonfiction story based cruising books, but rather like how to cruise books, I couldn't agree more. I think those are probably the two best authors for a newbie cruiser to read: Beth Leonard's Voyager's Handbook and Bruce Van Sant's uh, Passages South. Uh, are just awesome, awesome. And then Chris Bell says, you two and Uma are very inspirational for my wife and I who will be buying our boat to make our very own soon. That's awesome. And if you guys, again, for couples, I would really recommend if you have it in your uh, budget to check out a passage making company like Sailing Libra, for example. Um, for couples, I think it's really cool because you can kind of, uh, as a couple experience a passage with no pressure. So when I was on my sail, there were two other couples there. One couple will definitely go on and cruise. The other couple, I think, were kind of scared and kind of decided not to after it. But it was good because before investing all their time and money on a sailboat, they were able to realistically understand their own capabilities individually as well as as a couple. So consider that. So real quick, I wanted to address one question that I thought was great. Uh, Anthony Morris? Uh, yeah, Anthony Morris says, what technology do you not have that you wished you had right now? Mm. I think that would be a good question for both of us. I'll, I know mine is a uh, wind speed and direction indicator. Um, we, right now, to know how strong the wind is, and what direction it's coming from, we just use our eyes and our senses. Um, it's not that big a deal, it's how they did it for literally thousands of years, you know? So you can definitely do it without an anemometer, anemometer. Um, but what would be cool about it is simply uh, being able to go through a situation, a squall, a storm, a front, and deal with it and, and kind of know, okay, we had to put two reefs in the main or we ha really had to fall off or whatever, and then be able to go back and say, well, how strong was the wind? And then be able to kind of mentally know exactly how strong the wind was and what you had to do in that situation. And then when I'm weather routing, I can see like, okay, they're saying that there might be gusts up to whatever, and I can know in my head what that looks like exactly. Mm -hmm. So right now, we just both kind of have a pretty good understanding of the Beaufort scale and we know what the water looks like in different wind strengths. Mm -hmm. um, but that's totally subjective and we're definitely not, you know, exactly right on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Micromobile and Den Jackson family, thank you. Cheers. And, Cheers. And Hugh, you've been entered into the hat, I think, four times now. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, Hugh, you're, you're in it, man. <laughs> you're in it. I think you're going to win. I don't know. It's close. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's definitely my thing. Do you have a piece of technology that you wish we had? You know, it's funny because on sale Libra, they had the, the wind anemometer, and the, yeah, anemometer, and it was awesome for that very reason. And it made me think like, that would be a really cool tool to have on board, especially for when we're ch changing watches, because it's easy for me within a watch to, to feel the wind pick up or die down. 
But if you're trying to convey that information to the person uh, who's next on watch, it's, it's not very exact. It's like, well, the wind was like, you know, kind of gentle and then it picked up and then it got really crazy and then it got gentle again. It's like, uh, why don't you, right. it would be better to have more uh, quantitative values. Yeah. Now, I will say that the opposite is also true in the sense that not having an anemometer for a little while is good training yeah. because you rely on that darn thing if you've always had it. And so without it, you can literally look at the sea and like tell from the conditions what you should be doing, how you should be reacting. So basically the, the risk with any of this technology is that you turn sailing into a video game and that may that's and that's just not safe right yeah. like you need to have your head here and now yeah and you, you need to be focusing on not looking at the chart plotter looking at the color of the water yeah. you need to not be looking at the numbers on the screen you need to be looking at the sea you know and sailing us be someday <laughs> yeah so anyway so that 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 is a double-edged sword real quick i'm sorry okay. i he's leaving so sure. i gotta say something boat works today uh, says have a great holiday guys Aww. cheers man and I, I should have said when we were talking about what channels inspired us, oh, duh. Boatworks today is a huge inspiration for me. And I went on to like literally make a lot of the money that we've been spending to cruise by doing fiberglass work. And I learned how to fiberglass basically more or less through through their videos. So if you guys are, you know, getting into a refit in the middle of a refit, looking to learn more about doing boat work. Boatworks Today is a wonderful channel. He's got tons of videos going way back. They're super, super helpful. Cool, and I was going to say as well, you might have said this, but um, uh, as far as having all these tools and gadgets for, for doing passages, I did notice when I was on uh, Sail Libra uh, that they have like this awesome, badass, fully enclosed Dodger. They've got all the special uh, uh, tools to be able to detect anything that's happening outside of that Dodger. Um, and I think it does kind of give give you a false sense of security because you're not feeling the elements uh, And so it, it's kind of like oh, I'm in here and I'm safe and nothing bad can happen to me Whereas I kind of know what it feels like out there and I'm like, okay, this is getting serious <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, that's a good way of putting and it. And one last thing uh, if anyone is interested in signing up for a Sail Libra trip Just go to saillibra.com and you can use um, promo code PA offshore all caps um, and he's doing some crazy deals for Project Atticus followers. So sometimes you get five thousand to a thousand dollars off on a passage, depending on. Not five thousand. Sorry, five hundred to. You'll get five thousand dollars in your pocket. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> five hundred to a thousand dollars off on a passage, depending on how full the trip is. Yeah, so. and it helps us out. So it, yeah. again, if you guys are looking to kind of take your first step into this world and you want to do it with a little bit more safety and a little bit less of the responsibility and stress, then Sail Libra is a really great way to do that. Cool, and thanks Kenneth Stapleton again. That's the second time for you, I believe. <laughs> this is gr Ruthie Henderson. That's like the best comment. She say? says, Bud is like, blah -de blah blah And Desiree is like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's like that's got to be our next T-shirt, <laughs> Ruthie. Well, thank you, thank you for for putting words to our uh, to our situation. That's basically exactly. It's funny it. because Hugh uh, Van Dyne was there for my meetup in uh, Sarasota, Florida, when I was recently in the United States, and I'm so used to having Jordan around with me, and I kind of like being kind of introverted and more introspective. Um, and kind of a little bit in the background. So it was really weird for me to have to host a meetup and kind of go around and do uh, introductions. Hugh, I don't know if you thought I was awkward, but I felt really kind of out of my element. And I called Jordan afterwards. I was like, I miss you being the loud one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's there's pros and cons to be married to someone who won't shut up. <laughs> sometimes it comes in handy and sometimes it's just totally lame. Ralph Lang. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, but we should I, do I, this. Uh, I will say at least we kind of balance each other out in that regard. Wally. You know what I mean? Um, Wally Steed, Steedley. Oh, my legs are falling asleep. One thing, someone did say that they were real interested in, like, the relationship situation. Oh, yeah. Would you mind, sure. like, kind of just shedding some light? Because basically what happened there, guys, for that relationship episode, sailing is hard on relationships. Um, first of all, SB Spirit Libre and Parrotfish. Ah, oh, cheers, another one. Cheers, Thank gang. You. <laughs> um, 
Oh, and Christopher Keeler and Hugh Van Dunn say that they thought you did well Aww, at the at you. the meetup. Thank you. And I'm sure you did. I'm <laughs> sure you did. Oh, I forgot if I put Wally in there already. He might be going in twice. Well, that's fine, right? <laughs> Wally uh, says, thanks guys for the show. We really enjoy it. Sailing in Texas right now, but hope to join in a few years. Rock awesome. on. All right. So we are just about to do the raffle. Wally. So so hang in there. We're, we're, we're just about to, to reveal the winner. But uh, I think it would be a good idea for us to just briefly talk about that episode, um, Sailing is Hard on Relationships. Basically, and we were talking about this just today, is that no matter how hard we try to portray reality in our episodes, it, it's impossible because we're we're still showing a sliver of our overall experience and so it was Desiree's idea after we had that argument to film our own reactions and talk about how we saw the situation mm -hmm. so it was great that we had that material but we weren't able to show the whole story just because it's impossible and mm -hmm. so we I would like to kind of share that for a moment and um, I don't know do you want to just talk about it uh, you you start and okay. then I'll fill in the gaps. So basically, w we had the choice to include that or not, um, and we chose to include it because, and we got a lot of really great positive feedback mm -hmm. from it, because we felt like watching a lot of sailing channels and a lot of sailing uh, media in general, it makes the lifestyle out to be, you know, idyllic and and perfect. And I know that for us, when we were going through the refit, when we were learning how to sail, we were having a hard time. It was stressful. It was hard to work together. We were just, you know, there's constantly difficulties that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. And when what you're reading is showing you this world where it's all working out perfect for these guys, they're having a great time. They're, it's not hard for them at all. Mm -hmm. It really gets you down. Yeah. And that was almost like the, the biggest hardship in the whole thing was not just that it was hard, but that it seemed like it wasn't hard for other people. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of made a decision that we wanted to show people that I don't know if it's hard for everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everyone has the same relationship problems as us. I don't know if everyone had such a hell of a time doing a refit as us, but I want to let, we want people to know that it was super hard for us mm -hmm. and that we always, we do struggle mm -hmm. in our relationships so that so maybe you won't feel as uh, uh, you know, as uh, on the verge or, or as on the fringe, on the fringe as we did, because um, I do think it's more common than people let on. Mm -hmm. And so, basically, um, you know, yeah. that's yeah. Go ahead. And I would say again, like it's it's really hard to go into the specifics of like the the lead up to the argument and then afterwards, and it really affected us a lot um, because the panic attack was really intense for me. Um, but then also the comments afterwards really affected both of us. Jordan was getting a lot of hate, uh, people saying like you should never talk to someone like that. And I get it, and I don't think it's right that that Jordan like kind of acted like an asshole. And he acknowledged that and apologized. And it's difficult when you are sailing as a first mate because you really want to just do what your captain tells you and get through it. Um, but we always have a debrief afterwards, and you know there are sometimes things that I do really poorly afterwards that I apologize for and Jordan does things really poorly and he apologizes for them afterwards and that being said it is a goal in our relationship to not get to that point again where you know we're really trying to just kind of limit the amount of yelling um, but it's not we're not perfect and we're, we're working on it and you know for for everything that goes poorly <laughs> on Atticus at the end, we always come come together and really love and respect and appreciate each other. Um, and, yeah, so that's kind of our take on the relationship drama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, uh, anyway, I think we've, in general, things have been going well. And, it, you know, I think the whole experience. And this is good for if any of you guys are kind of getting into it and you're like, oh, shit, like this, this is putting a huge stress on the relationship. That's true, but you also, I would say, come out the other end stronger. I think your relationship comes out the other end stronger. Yeah, as long as you communicate afterwards. If you're just bottling it up and, be, and I'm like, God, that freaking a-hole, <laughs> then that doesn't work. So uh, we try to 
always communicate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but still, like the the refit, you know, we used to like handle it really poorly, like handle uh, arguments and han whoa. Oh boy. <laughs> Got um, another Dar cuss. Darla, Sorry. you're going in one more time. Then, as soon as you finish your sentence, let's do the drive. That's it. I'm I'm rambling. I I'm having a hard time really like focusing on my point. But I guess I just mean to say that if you guys are having a hard time, we're right there with you. But at the end of the day, and I think that our relationship is growing a lot stronger than if we didn't have these challenges mm -hmm. and if we weren't forced to kind of work together in such a close and de and, wow. and I guess in, depend on each other like yeah. we do. You and know? I guess so, the, all the nuances of our, of our relationship are really hard to convey in an episode. But if you watch us from the beginning, I feel like you have a good understanding of like the how we are a little bit fluid with alpha and what's that? beta. <laughs> you know, we kind of like give and take each other's moments and responsibilities and. I remember somebody on there was saying I was like a little submissive pet for taking that kind of behavior and I don't feel that way. I feel like I'm a very strong person in our relationship and I'm proud of myself and I know Jordan's proud of me so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, all okay. right. Okay, darn it. Now I need to get two more pieces of paper. <laughs> yeah, okay, Brad Scott, he's getting, okay, so this is last last call for uh, for names in the hat oh, no. before I, they all blow away. My paper's wet. I need to get... <laughs> Drive, so drive paper. <laughs> Gosh. Oh man. I, I guess oh. would we would we call this third world problems or first world problems? Yeah. I don't know. Second world problems. So anyway, uh, but yeah. So rock on, guys. We, talk about we, our holiday we really do appreciate all of your positivity and and kind of like keeping it keeping it real. You know, like. Uh, we, I guess what I mean to say is it's been fun m turning this into a conversation rather than like a one-sided monologue, you know? We had so much like really great advice mm -hmm. in the comments of that episode. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully we can keep that up, not just with relationship problems and not just problems in general, but just everything, trying to stay real and get into like kind of get a back and forth going with that. Okay. okay. Who did I miss? Hold on. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, somebody wants you to kiss me. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> love you, buddy. Oh, love you too. Okay. Uh, sailing us be Sunday. All right, Brad Scott. All right, here we go. Hold on, hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> is there anyone after Brad Scott? Oh, Hugh, Hugh just got in for one Hugh! more. This is it. <laughs> if it's not Hugh, like something's wrong with. Final the countdown. All right. Brad We're getting Scott. the stirring going. Come on, and Hugh. I'm just gonna put Hugh because we all know it's Hugh Van Den. <laughs> uh, Ellis Van, Ellis Van Temple says I miss out on get our name in that hat. If you donate five dollars or more via super chat or PayPal, you get your name in here. But you got like you got like sixty, got seconds. 60 seconds. So I'll stall. Desiree wants to pull, but I'll stall for you, Ellis. <laughs> go go go. <laughs> anyway. And the drawing winner will get a free Project Atticus uh, T-shirt. All right, so let's do Still it. Still stirring. Yeah. Still stirring. Yeah. This is, this is, uh, I'm sweating bullets here. All right. Should we go and do it? <laughs> Josh Burns says, and cue the wind. And cue the wind. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. You want me to do it or you want to do it? All right. Well, I, I know there's a lag here and I just, I don't want to give Ellis a hard time by not. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how long the lag is. Ellis, are you there? <laughs> we, we can throw him in just in case. Hold on. Oh, I didn't check the PayPal donations. Good point, oh, Dave. Oh boy. Thanks, Dave. Dave's okay. on it. Good. That's one more way we can stall. Oh boy. So I missed. Um. Okay, and Dave Richmond. In the event that you can't hang out, um. Oh, Brad Scott says there's not much lag at all. So Ellis. Ellis is down for the count. Dave Richmond. Anyway, and in the event Susan. that you can't hang out for the the grand finale here, we are going to post the name of the Susan winner Burke. on our Facebook page tomorrow. Um, and whoever the winner is, you need to get in touch with us, ideally through our Facebook page. Just shoot us a message, um, and we will give you the promo code to get the free T-shirt. Secret private promo code. Okay, that's, that's right. it. I got, I think I got everyone on PayPal. Let me just do one last check. Nope. That's it. All right, that's it. Here. Are you guys ready? You should probably pick it. Okay. 
because I've been stirring. Okay. You ready? Yep. You guys ready? I feel so sad to just do one. Maybe we should do two. Okay. And the winner ah! is... <laughs> Sailing SV... Oh, come on. Who is it? Suspense is killing me. Come on. <laughs> oh, overexposed. Okay, overexposed. Sailing SV, SV Sunday! Sunday! <laughs> Woo! Right, let's do two. How about that? No? Two? Yeah. All right. Because I wasn't expecting you to get so many. Okay. Okay. We're doing one more. Right. I got to throw Hugh in one more time. <laughs> yeah, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh's getting in there one more. <laughs> Hugh says catches for life. Rock on, man. <laughs> nice. All right. Okay, you need to stir it. Okay, we got one more, guys. We got bonus round. <laughs> yeah, SV Someday, there you are. You're a winner. <laughs> okay, you ready, bud? Yep. Okay, get okay. in there. CT's pulling for Hugh. <laughs> Rock on. James Stedder. Oh, well, sorry, Hugh, buddy. <laughs> That's so <but>, sad. <laughs> well, no, it's not sad for James. <laughs> sorry. Yes, congratulations, James. <laughs> congratulations, James. All right, guys. Cool. Well, thank you all for joining us today. And we will definitely be doing another live stream while we're here in the Bay Islands. Uh, Brad Scott says, how much for the hat? Here we go. Uh -oh. I'm putting it on. <laughs> all right. So for all you guys that didn't win a t-shirt, you can just, you can know that uh, your name is resting snugly against my scalp. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what, how that makes you feel, but uh, <laughs> it's real. <laughs> all right, gang. So uh, yeah, we will be doing another live stream here shortly. I don't know for a fact if we'll do it next week. I think we might be taking our advanced freediving course next week on Tuesday, so we'll see. But we will be doing another one soon. So thank you all for joining. That was super fun. Hold on. Somebody said two is unlucky. We can make it three. I don't... Uh, the, it does cost us uh, not an... That's un for everyone. Yeah, you right. get a shirt. You get a shirt. You get a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll do another drawing in, the ne in our next live stream we'll, also. We'll, we'll run the number. We'll run the numbers on this one and see like how many t-shirts we can we could reasonably give away next time. We'll, cool. we'll make sure that it's like a, a fair deal. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Thanks again. That was so fun. Thank you. And until next time, we will catch you guys on the flip side. Anything that we want to push? Yes. Uh, I just did want to mention we do have a Project Atticus uh, holiday wish list on Amazon. Um, with some kind of like final purchases for the boat that that we've been like really really jonesing for um, So if you can you can check that out It's in the description below But also if you're making any purchases during the holiday season on Amazon at all If you just click on that link and then buy from that link um, That counts as an Amazon affiliate link and we get a little bit of a kickback on any purchase you make so um, If you want to help us out free of cost to you just use that link. That'd be awesome. Yeah, literally Hit that link, it'll take you to our list, and then just browse through the website like you normally would, and we'll get a tiny little kickback. So. Yep, and then James and uh, Darla, get in touch with me on our Facebook page, and I'll get you your code. All right, rock on. Well, guys, this has been super fun, and uh, can't wait to see you guys again. And until next time, we'll just be rocking and rolling here on Atticus in the Bay Islands. And hope you guys enjoy this week's episode. We'll Merry you Christmas, up. you magnificent bastards. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Dave. <laughs> Rock on, Dave. That's great. All right. <laughs> With that, we're out. <laughs> all right, Atticus out. Catch you all on the flip side. Uh -oh.